Hello all and welcome back. Let me begin by asking you a couple of questions. Are you one of those guys who asks a lot of questions online whenever your code starts behaving erratically? Are you one of those guys who has time but does not know how to debug the code step by step? Are you one of those guys who is willing to learn debugging? And are you one of those guys who's committed to writing good code? And when I say good code, I do not mean writing hello world applications. If the answer is yes to these questions, then this video is for you. In this video, which is the second part of the series, error handling and debugging, I will take you through the entire process of debugging. Not only by the end of this video, will you learn how to debug, but you'll also have a better understanding of your code, whether it is written by you or by someone else. When you write significant lines of code, you are bound to encounter bugs or unexpected results. Trust me, it's normal. Even after 20 years of programming, I still have to debug the code. So what exactly is debugging? Debugging requires a lot of patience. I'm stressing on patience, caps lock it, bold it, underline it. You cannot debug the code like this. Nope, nope, it's not gonna happen. Been there, done that. You need a lot of patience to debug the code. Debugging is a patient process of locating the line which errors out or bugs out. Fortunately, Excel gives you a lot of tools which can help you in debugging the code. So let's go through all of them one by one. We will now launch the Visual Basic Editor. If you're not sure what Visual Basic Editor is, then I recommend watching the video Visual Basic Editor and Introduction. We will press the shortcut key Alt F11 to launch the Visual Basic Editor. Here I have created some basic codes in different modules which will help us in debugging. So let's open the code module of module 1. This is module 1. You can double click on it or you can right click on it and click on view code. This code is not perfect. There are some errors in it. I have deliberately left something out for demonstration purpose. What we are trying to do in this code is we are trying to find the last row in column A of sheet 2. So if I go to sheet 2, I have some data here. So I'm trying to find the last row, which is six. And then I'm trying to loop through the cell starting from the first cell, in this case, row two. And then I'm displaying the names of the employees in immediate window. Let's go back. Before you run a code, ensure two things. First, you have option explicit on top, which I already have here. This is not mandatory, but is a very good practice to prevent any unexpected results. I've covered about option explicit in my video Visual Basic Editor and Introduction. I'll be covering a lot of things from that video in this video. So if you have not seen that video, I will highly recommend that you see that video first. Second, in the last video, I briefly spoke about compile VBA project option, which is in the debug menu. We use that option to check for syntax error or parsing errors. If you're not aware of what syntax errors are, then I recommend watching that video first, which is part one of the series, error handling and debugging. So let's go ahead and check if there are any syntax errors. Click on the debug menu and then click on compile VBA project. The moment we click on that, the debugger tells us that the variable i is not defined. How do I know i is not defined? Because i is highlighted here and the message is variable not defined. Now, this is a good start. We have begin the process of debugging. Let's declare our variable. So I'm going to click on OK, and then I'm going to declare dim i as long. I will click on debug and compile VBA project again. This time it tells me that the last variable is not defined, but I don't need a last variable. What I need is last row. So obviously this is a typo. See the benefit of using option explicit. So I'm going to copy this and I'm going to paste it here. Let's see if there are any more compile errors. I click on debug and I click on compile VBA project and I do not get an error message. So everything is fine. There are no more syntax errors or parsing errors. Now there are other options available to you under the debug menu. For example, step into, step over, step out, run to cursor, etc, etc. 
I can go through them sequentially, but I will use a different approach to explain all of these so that it is easier to understand. Now let's run our code. Click on Run Sub User Form button or simply press the shortcut key F5. When I run this, VBA pops up a message saying that method range of object worksheet failed. Let's click on debug. Whenever you get an error message, VBA will offer you to debug the code. However, you will not get this option if the VBA is password protected. I will cover about password protection in one of my future videos. So what exactly is happening here? The line has been highlighted in yellow. I'm using debug to show the content of the cell in immediate window. So before we go ahead, first let's understand the syntax of the debug object as this is an essential part of debugging. The debug object has two methods, print and assert. The print strings expression sends string expression as output to the immediate window at debug runtime. If you're not aware what immediate window is, then see the video Visual Basic Editor and Introduction. I've spoken about it there. This is how the immediate window looks like. And if you do not see the window, then you can make it visible by pressing Ctrl G. The assert expression evaluates expression and if false, breakpoints in the debugger. We will cover this later in the video. So coming back to this code, you usually get the error method range of object worksheet when VBA is not able to identify or return a range which you are referring to. This can happen if the range does not exist or you have provided incorrect cell address. So let's check what is wrong with this code. Let's hover the mouse over the i variable and we see that the value of i is 0. You are able to see this value because of auto data tips. I've also covered this in the same video which is Visual Basic Editor and Introduction. So what is wrong with 0? It just looks fine. The problem is that the rows in Excel start with 1 and not 0. And there is no cell which has the address A0. Now how do I know the address is evaluated as A0? That is because A ampersand I which is A ampersand 0 is nothing but A0. You can also check that in the immediate window by typing a question mark sign followed by the expression to be evaluated. For example, if I type question mark A ampersand I, I get A0. And if I now type dot range A0 dot address, I get an error because this range does not exist. Now if I change this 0 to 1, see what happens. It gives me the cell address. So let's go ahead and fix that. I will change the 0 to 1 so that the loop starts from 1. Now I can either stop the code and run the code again or what I can do is drag this yellow line to the starting of the for loop. This will run the loop from the start. So let's do that. Take your mouse cursor over the yellow arrow which is here and left click on it. Keep it pressed and drag it towards the for line. Once you are at that line, leave the mouse button and you will see that the yellow line has moved up. You can achieve the same thing using debug set next statement. The shortcut key is Ctrl F9. So if I want to move to let's say next I, then I will place the cursor on next I and then press Ctrl F9. Similarly, if I want to go back here, I will put my cursor here and press Ctrl F9. One more thing, let's say I'm in module 4 and I am examining this particular procedure. And if I want to go back to that yellow line, simply click on debug and click on show next statement. It will take me back. Now let's clear the immediate window because that is where the results will be sent. So right click on the immediate window and click on clear. Now go back to the procedure and click on F5 to continue execution of the code. And you will notice that the name of the employees have been displayed in immediate window. So we have seen couple of things till now. First, we understood how to use compile VBA project to do a basic check if everything is okay. Second, we understood that we can use debug.print to print the result to immediate window. This helps in checking the variable or object in question. Third, 
we saw how we can drag the yellow line instead of restarting the entire code just to run a specific part of code all over again. Now let's understand how to use debug.assert. The assert expression evaluates expression and if false, breakpoints in the debugger. And hence, they should be turned off when you give your application to an end user. Assertions are mainly used when you are writing and testing the code. I'm going to quickly change this code to show you how to use assert. So I will delete the first three lines. I'll leave dim i as long and then I will set the value of i as 11. Next I will type debug dot assert space i is greater than 10. And then I will type a message box i is greater than 10. So what I'm doing here is I am going to evaluate this expression here using debug dot assert. And if this expression is true, then the next line will be executed. If it is false, then the code should pause here. Let's test it. I'm going to run this and I get the message i is greater than 10. Okay, this works fine. Now let's change this value to 10. Now if I run this, see what happens. The code pauses at debug.assert. And when you get the yellow line, this is the time when you start debugging and checking why is the code not working as expected. As I suggested that delete the assert statement before you share your application. But if you do not want to delete it, and at the same time, you do not want the assert to be executed by your, let's say, client, then you have two options. First, either comment those lines or you can turn off debug.assert from the tools menu. So let's click on tools. I'm going to stop this code. Let's click on tools and then click on VBA project properties. Here there is something which is called conditional compilation arguments. In the conditional compilation arguments, choose a customized name. I'm going to give a name is assert on and I will set the value as one. The one means that it is currently true. So I'll click on OK. We will now use hash if statement with the compilation argument is assert on to execute assert statement if required. The hash symbol represents a preprocessor command. These commands are processed prior to compilation, essentially producing dynamic or conditional code. I will make a small change to the code now. What I will do is just before debug.assert, I will type hash if is assert on, then execute this statement, hash end if. Now let's run this. When I run this, the code pauses at that line. And that is because we have set the value as is assert on is equal to one. Okay, so I'm going to pause the code now and I go back to tools, VBA project properties and I set this to zero and I click on OK. Now when I run this, see what happens. I is greater than 10. Let's click on OK. So the debug assert did not execute. So this is the second way of disabling or switching off debug.assert. This is useful when you have a lot of debug.asserts spread out in your code. The next thing I will show you is how to insert a breakpoint. You set a breakpoint to suspend execution at a specific line of code in a procedure. When the breakpoint is reached, your program will momentarily suspend its execution. The shortcut key for adding a breakpoint is F9. Simply place your cursor at the line you want to add the breakpoint. Let's say I want to do it here and then press F9. And in case you want to remove the breakpoint, simply press F9 again. Alternatively, you can also click on the left gray margin beside the line, which is this area. If you click on it, the breakpoint will be set. Similarly, if you click on it again, the breakpoint will be removed. You can also insert a breakpoint by clicking on the debug menu and then clicking on toggle breakpoint. You'll notice that the shortcut key is F9. Toggling means that if there is a breakpoint, it will remove it. And if it is not there, then it will set it. Just like we saw in the case of shortcut key F9. So I'm going to click on it and I get the breakpoint. So if I go back and I toggle breakpoint again from the menu, it removes the breakpoint. Before we go ahead, let me quickly copy the loop through Excel cells code, which I have kept in module four. So I will get it from here and I will paste it here and I will uncomment this. 
let me fix the errors dim i is long and this was last row and this was one clear just to be sure let's run this and check yes this code is working now let's say i want the code to suspend the code at the debug.print line so that i can check the value of the variable i so i will place the cursor on that line and i will press f9 now let's run the code by pressing the shortcut key f5 you will notice that the code stops at that line. So this is why you use the breakpoint to pause the code at a particular line. Now let's stop this code for a moment. I want to talk about stepping into the code. Stepping into the code is usually used with breakpoints so that once the code stops at a breakpoint, you can then step to the code to monitor where is the error. To step into the code, you can use the shortcut key F8. You can also click on the debug and then click on step into which is here debug and step into here you'll see the shortcut key is F8. To understand this better let's set the breakpoint at the top of the code. You cannot set the breakpoint at the line which has a dim statement or a line label. I've spoken about line labels in the first part of these series error handling and debugging. So let's set the breakpoint on set ws is equal to this workbook dot sheets sheet 2 and I will remove the breakpoint from here. Now let's run the code. You will notice that the code stops at set ws line which is normal which is what we expected. Now press f8 and see what happens. The debugger will move you to the next line of code. Let's press f8 again. Each time you press F8, the debugger will move you to the next line of code. So I'll keep on pressing F8 till we come to debug.print. Now before I go ahead, I will clear the immediate window. Now see what happens when I press F8, what happens? I get the header of the column, which is name of employees. If I go back here, this is the name of employees. And since the value of I is one, which is A1, I get this value. Now I press F8 again. It will come back to debug.print. Here the value of i is 2 now. So it will pick up the value from a2, which is patty. If I press f8, I get patio furniture. This way you keep on pressing f8 and it will keep on executing the next line of code. Stepping into the code helps you understand how the code is progressing, which in turn helps you debugging the code. Once you're done, you can press F5 to finish executing the code. See, it showed you all the names from that column and it ended the execution of the code. If you have breakpoints in your code and you want to remove all of them in one go, let's say you have a couple of them. So I will put one breakpoint here, one here and one here. So if you want to remove all of them in one go, then you can either press Ctrl Shift F9 or simply click on debug and then click on clear all breakpoints. The shortcut key is also mentioned here. When you click on that, all the breakpoints are removed. Let's click on the debug menu and let's see what all options do we have now. So we have covered compiled VBA project. We have covered step into right below step into we have step over. We can also see that the shortcut key next to it is shift F8. Step over means that if your code calls another procedure, you may not want to step through each line of code in that procedure. In this case, you can step over and skip over the other procedure. This way you can immediately continue executing the code in your current procedure. Let's understand this by taking an example. Let's go to module two. Here I have two procedures calling second procedure and second procedure. So what happens is this procedure is calling the second procedure. This is a very basic example to demonstrate how stepping over works. Let's first put a breakpoint on message box. Hello there. Now let's run the code. So the code pauses at the message box line. If you press F8, it will execute that line, which is the message box. Fine. And then it highlights second procedure. If I press F8 again, instead of moving to the next message box, it will enter the second procedure. See, and then if you keep on pressing F8, it will keep on moving to the next line of code. Once the second procedure is run, then it will execute the next line, which is message box. My name is Sid. And if I press F8, I get that message box. I click on OK. 
the end sub is highlighted. If I press F8, the code execution will stop. Now let's run the code again. The code pauses here. Fair enough. I press F8. I get the message box. Now if I press F8 again, it will get inside the other procedure. If I do not want to step through the lines of the second procedure, then I can press Shift plus F8 to step over that procedure. Let's press that shortcut key, Shift F8. And we get a message box, which is what is your name. The message box is from the second procedure. Obviously, the execution of the second procedure will happen, but the debugger will not step through it. And it immediately moved to the next line, which is message box. My name is Sid. So we were able to step over the second procedure by pressing the shortcut key Shift F8. This is called step over. While checking for errors, you can use step over to skip a procedure if you're 100% sure that the called procedure does not have any error. When I say 100%, I mean 100%. It cannot be 99%. If it is 99%, then I would recommend stepping through the second procedure as well. So I'm going to stop this code. The next option in the debug menu is step out. The shortcut key is Control Shift F8. Step out is to exit a called procedure. Like step over is to skip a procedure. Step out is to come out of a procedure. Let's take the same example. Let's say you wanted to press Shift F8 on this line, but by mistake you pressed F8 and you entered the second procedure. To exit out of this procedure, you don't have to continue pressing F8 again and again. You can simply press Ctrl Shift F8 and you will come out of this procedure. Let's test this. So I will run this. I will press F8. I'll get the message box. The second procedure gets highlighted. Now, instead of pressing Shift F8, I will press F8 and I'm inside the procedure. And I realized, hey, I didn't want to get inside this procedure and I don't want to step through each line of this procedure. So simply press Control Shift F8 and the entire procedure is executed. You will get your message box, but you will not have to step through the lines of that procedure. And the code moves to the immediate line after the second procedure which is message box, my name is Sid. The next option in the debug menu is run to cursor. The shortcut key is control plus F8. Run to cursor works like a breakpoint, but it is not a breakpoint. Like we saw in the breakpoint, we have to set a breakpoint. Here, we do not need to set it. Also, the breakpoints will remain there till the time you remove it. Here, run to cursor will only work once. If you want it to work again, then you will have to call it again. To call run to cursor when the code is not executing, place your cursor on the desired line and press Ctrl plus F8. So if I, let's remove this breakpoint. So if I want the code to pause at second procedure, then I click on this line and then press Ctrl F8. See? The message box is executed and the code pauses on that line. So I'm going to stop the code. When the code is running and you want to call run to cursor, then simply place the cursor on the relevant line and right click on the mouse button. So let's test this. First, I'll put a breakpoint in this message box and then I will run the code. So the code has paused at message box hello there. Now I want the run to cursor to happen on this message box. So I put my cursor here, I right click on it and then I click on run to cursor. So I get the message box hello there and what is your name which is from the second procedure and instantly the code stops on this line. Let's take another example to see how this works. We will not use the message boxes. Now I would like to call run to cursor when the code is not executing on this procedure. Okay, and I want the code to pause on what is your name. So I put my cursor on this line and I press Ctrl F8. See, the code automatically stops here. So I'll stop that. Now I'll put a breakpoint on debug.print and then I'll execute the code. So now the code is running. So now if I want the run to cursor to happen on the debug.print bye bye line, then I'll put my cursor on this line, right click on it and then I'll click on run to cursor. 
and the code directly pauses there. Obviously, the code is getting executed. You'll see the immediate window getting filled up with all these messages, but at least you're not getting those message boxes. So we have seen how to use run to cursor when the code is running and when the code is not running. The next thing that I'm going to cover is the watch window. By default, the watch window is hidden. To make it visible, click on view and then click on watch window and you will notice that the watch window appears on the right side. You can use the watch window to watch a variable when the code is running. As you can see, there are four elements inside that window, which is expression, value, type and context. Let's understand each of them one by one. Expression lists the watch expression with the watch icon toolbar button on the left. Value lists the value of the expression at the time of the transition to break mode. You can edit a value and then press enter the up arrow key, the down arrow key, tab, shift tab or click somewhere on the screen to validate the change. If the value is illegal, the edit field remains active and the value is highlighted. A message box describing the error also appears. You can cancel the change by pressing the escape button. The type lists the expression type and the context lists the context of the watch expression. If the context of the expression isn't in scope when going to break mode, the current value isn't displayed. A watch expression is defined by you so that you can monitor it in the watch window. When your application enters break mode, the watch expressions you selected appear in the watch window. I showed you one way to make the watch window visible. The second way to make the watch window visible is by adding a watch. So I'm going to close this watch window. You can make a watch window visible by adding a watch. Let's take the example from module 3 to understand watches in detail. So I'll go to module 3. Now let's add a watch on the i and j variable. To add a watch, place the cursor on the variable and then right click and click on add watch. In the add watch dialog box, you will notice that the expression is pre-filled with the variable name. In the context section, we have procedure module and project. In the procedure, you will get the name of the procedure in which we have the variable or the expression. Right now it is I and the I is in watch example. In the module, you will see the name of the module where the watch example is, which is module 3. In the next section, which is watch type, we have three options. To display the value of the watch expression, choose watch expression. If you want to stop execution if the expression evaluates to true, then choose the second option, which is break when value is true. And to stop execution when the value of the expression changes, then choose the third option, which is break when value changes. Since we want to watch what happens to the variables, we will select the first option, which is watch expression. And then we will click on OK. You will notice that the watch window appears. Similarly, we will add watch for WS. And I'll click on OK. And I will also do it for J. So we have three watches. Now let's put a breakpoint on for i is equal to 1 to 10. Now when I run the code, the code pauses at the breakpoint. Now look at the watch window. It tells you that the value of i is 0. The value of j is 0. The type of the variable is long for both of them. The type of the variable for ws is worksheet. Do you see the plus sign next to ws? Ignore that for a moment. I'll cover that in a short while. And the context section contains the name of the module and the procedure. Let me close the immediate window so that we get a bigger watch window. You can also drag and resize the columns like this. Now let's press F8. When I press F8, see the value of I changes. If I press F8 again, the value of J changes. Forget about the debug for a moment. I'll keep on pressing F8. Just watch the variable values. See how the value of i and j are incrementing. Using watches is very helpful when you want to monitor variables, objects without using debug. Here I am using debug, but you can remove it. You don't need that. 
you can directly watch the values of those variables in the watch window. Here are a few shortcut keys to help you when you want to work with the watches. Shift plus enter will display the selected watch expression. Control plus W will display the edit watch dialog box. Enter expands or collapses the selected watch value if it has a plus or minus sign to the left of it. And Shift F10 will bring the view shortcut menu. So now coming back to the plus sign. So WS object has a plus sign next to it. If I click on that, it will expand. So I'm going to make this watch window slightly bigger. So you can see that there are many other options inside it. You can press the enter key to collapse it. And if you press the enter key again, it will expand it. So let me make this watch window small again and let me stop the code. The last thing that we will cover is the locals window. The locals window is like the watch window. You can see the variable values in real time. To make the window visible in case it is hidden, click on the view menu and then click on the locals window. Let me close the watches window so you can see the locals window. The locals window will automatically display all the declared variables in the current procedure and their values when that procedure is run. It is also automatically updated every time there is a change from runtime to break mode or when you navigate to the stack display. Let's understand locals window by using the code samples from module 4. So I will open module 4. Here I have three procedures, very simple procedures, one procedure calling the other and three different variables assigning very basic values to them. Now let's put a breakpoint on the first line which is i is equal to 10 and now let's run this code. You will immediately notice that the locals window is populated with the variable in this procedure. If there were more variables then those variables would also have been shown here. So for example if I stop this code and if I type dim k as long and i is equal to 10 and let's say k is equal to 10 and now if I run this code you will notice that both i and k are showing in this locals window. Here as well there are four window elements. The first one is the call stack button. This button opens the call stack dialog box which lists the procedure in the call stack. The second element is the expression which lists the name of the variables. The first variable in the list is a special module variable and can be expanded to display the module level variables in the current module. For a class module, the system variable me is defined. For standard modules, the first variable is the name of the current module. For example, in this we have module 4 because that's the current module. Global variables and variables in other projects are not accessible from the locals window. You cannot edit data in this column. The third element is the value. This lists the value of the variable. Here when you click a value in the value column, the cursor changes to an I beam. You can edit a value and then press enter, the up arrow key, the down arrow key, tab, shift tab or click on the screen to validate the change. If the value is illegal, the edit field remains active and the value is highlighted. A message box describing the error also appears. If you want to cancel the change then simply press the escape key. All numeric variables must have a value listed. String variables can have empty value. It will accept it. The variables that contain sub variables can be expanded and collapsed. Collapsed variables do not display a value but each sub variable does. The expand icon and the collapse icon appear to the left of the variable. The last element is the type which lists the variable type. You cannot edit data in this column. Now let's understand what a stack button is. You see this button with three dots? That's a stack button. When you click on this, you are presented with a window where you can see the current procedure that is being run. Let's close this and let's press F8, F8 again to enter the second procedure. Now we are in the second procedure. If you click on the stack button again, you will notice that the list has been updated. Now the second procedure is also added to the stack. Similarly, if you go to the third procedure from the second procedure, each time a procedure calls another procedure, it is added to the list. Now if I move to the third procedure, see what happens. 
So I'll keep on pressing F8, F8, and then I'm in the third procedure. So if you now click on the stack button, you'll see that the procedure has been added to the list. Here you can click on the relevant procedure and then click on show. The local window will get updated accordingly. Currently the third procedure is selected and hence the variable from the third procedure is shown in the locals window. To see the variables from the procedure A, I will click on that and I'll click on show. And you will notice that the variables i and k are shown from that procedure. This brings us to the end of this video. So I hope with so many tools, if I may say so, you will be able to now efficiently and quickly find bugs or lines which are giving you unexpected results in your code. Time for a quick recap. In this video, we learned what is debugging. We also understood that to debug the code, we need patience. You cannot debug the code just like this. Nope, it's not going to happen. We also went through the different tools that Excel has provided us, which helped us in debugging the code efficiently and quickly. If you still have any questions, feel free to leave a comment in the comment section below, or you can also email me on support at tamexcel.com. I would also like to tell you that I started a FB group, which is called Microsoft Excel VBA. The link to that group is mentioned in the description. So feel free to join it. And if you have any questions about programming or if you are stuck with a specific piece of code, post it there. I or somebody else will definitely reply to your questions. Just a quick reminder, I will be posting two videos every week, one on Monday and the other on Thursday. If you would like to support this channel and if you are specifically inclined to learn Visual Basic programming from scratch, then I highly recommend that you watch the playlist where I have kept the topics in a particular sequence. It will help you learn Visual Basic programming from scratch. Go ahead, watch other videos, drop a couple of likes. When I say couple, it shouldn't be one or two, put more likes. And if you still have not subscribed to this channel, go ahead and subscribe to this channel by clicking on the bell icon. And I will see you on Monday when I bring to you 10 different string functions which you will use in Visual Basic for applications.